there's a wonderful arty phrase which says tone does all the work and colour gets all the glory and you might have heard it or you might not have but I want to explain what's going on. So have you ever looked at paintings of like rainbow zebras and thought why, why does that work? I know zebra isn't the colours of a rainbow, they're black and white but yeah I still know that's a, a zebra or something like this eagle over my shoulder. I know that eagle hasn't got turquoise feathers and a pink tummy but it's still an eagle. Or you see rainbow portraits, um, you know I still know that's a young man or you know, I still know it's a chap with beard and glasses but I know full well they are not green, blue, orange. Well, what's going on is that the artist is basically swapping colours around but keeping the tones, the lights and the darks consistent and therefore it's all still recognisable. It's called colour value switching and that's what I want to explain today. My name's Liz Chatterton, I'm a professional artist based in Berkshire and every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish someone had told me about ages ago and this week it's colour value switching. Let's have a quick think about what we actually mean by tone and what we mean by colour I guess. So generally colour is made up of three things. There's the hue which is yellow, purple, red, brown. The name of the colour is the hue. Then there is chroma, which is the, the, the sort of vividness of the colour, how much it uh, varies from neutral. So if I give you two examples here, both monochrome portraits, um, obviously a different person, but uh, monochrome portraits in blue, this one has a higher chroma, it's more vivid than this blue they are both blue, They both their hue is blue. So I hope that helps. And then tone, which is what we're really thinking about today. And tone is how light or dark the colour is. So these swatches go from, from a dark tone and get lighter and lighter and in watercolour to lighten our tone, we're adding water, to deepen our tone, we're adding pigment and doing one of these swatches, or not just one, many of these swatches, oh is such a good exercise. It really teaches you about the pigment to water ratio and make sure you've got your, your head around that. All you need to do is get a, an old strip of watercolour paper, well, I thought, the, oh look, see old paintings, divide them into eight or nine sections and then go from what I would call full fat, so just enough water to be workable, right down to pretty much a pale tint, you know, dirty watercolour, and see if you can get even steps along the way. And it's a bit harder than you might imagine. And just to prove that, I'm going to show you one using grey. But that's the first one I did of the grey and I really struggled to get my initial steps right. Then this one I got nice even steps. So so it's a, it's a great exercise and I'll show you that now. But just before I do, I want to point out that not all colours have that full tonal range. So if we look at our yellow here, it's actually a really limited tonal range from full fat to tint of the water, those are very close. So really there's almost only five steps there. Whereas say this purple has got a far wider tonal range from full fat down to dirty water. If we were putting that and trying to work out if those are the same tone, I would say that probably is, but this yellow can never go as dark as this purple and that's just really important to understand. This, which I guess is a sepia, does have a very similar tonal range to that purple and probably this alizarin 
just about as well. But say that yellow never ever can get as dark in tone as those colours. So let me show you how to do one of these swatches. Mix up a little of the colour that you've chosen until it's just workable and paint the first square. Then add a brush full of water so it's slightly lighter and keep doing that until you get down to pretty much barely there and try and keep your steps really even. So we've started to get to understand tone by doing those swatches and I just wanted to show you a couple more monochromes just to show how important tone is. We still recognise this totally as a person because all the tones are in the right place. It's why black and white telly works, because we recognise things through tones. So a monochrome, one hue but with different tones, can be a fantastic way of working. However, you're watching this film because you want to understand about colour value switching. This young man is still recognisable as a person even though he really isn't yellow, green and blue. This gentleman really wasn't green, orange, purple, pink but you recognise him as a human being and I hope he would recognise himself. So what we've done is swapped the hues round but kept the tonal map the same. So the darks are still dark, the lights are still light, whether they are green, yellow or purple. And let's just give you a few more examples. You know, this gentleman did not have a blue beard, he didn't have, you know, a yellow cheek or purple lip. We've swapped the colours, but we've, sorry, I should say we've swapped the hues, just to be really accurate about this but we've kept that tonal map the same. That was just back to this, this uh, young man again, slightly different version. I just love the light on this, so I've painted him lots of times. This gentleman was not purple and yellow, but we actually don't even recognise that he's purple and yellow until we start looking at those hues because we can see the, the tonal map of his face. Pushed to the extreme, we can go pretty rainbow coloured. Some of the examples I just showed you were fairly analogous, so the colours were all quite close together. But here, Father Christmas has really swallowed a rainbow, and yet we can see who he is. And this is another rainbow Father Christmas, just to, to give you some ideas. Obviously, this is on an old piece of cardboard. I know Father Christmas hasn't got a turquoise beard, I promise you, and I know he hasn't got blue cheeks, but we can still see who he is and see that sort of tonal map so we know who the jolly old person is. So it's not just in portraits that we might do colour value switching. This Canada goose, eh, at first sight, might look fairly goosey colours. Um, but of course, if we look a little bit closer, it's actually got a blue head and you can see the blues coming through here. But because the tones are in the right place, we still read it as, as a goose. Show you some different options. Pretty much a monochrome there, but we still knew, know it's a goose. Rather different colour combination here. Oh my goodness, we've got a green and magenta goose of course we have or slightly different goose slightly different color combination and what this also shows I hope is that the tone is doing all the work but the color is probably what we notice and also the color affects how we feel about a subject so color really impacts your emotions whereas the tone just gets on with it fairly unnoticed, a bit overlooked, but is what helps us recognise what the, the object is. How does colour value switching actually work then? We've seen that we've got the colours and we've got the, the tones. And a good way to understand it is to cut up a couple of your, your strips of tones until you've got little swatches. Right, so if we put the darkest ones at the top, and the palest ones down bottom and then make judgments about 
the relative tones of these colours. This is just a really good way of training your eye because we can get really confused by tone and colour. Let's have a look. Well, it's really pale, that one. Probably go off the bottom. Mm. Is that as deeper tone as that? Probably not. I think that's probably a second layer. That one is a lighter tone. Let's have a look. Mm, probably there. That's very similar. Mm, that's probably between those two, but I can't fit it on to my board unfortunately. Yep, I think that's probably about right. I say that's sort of halfway there. That's probably about there-ish. Oh, that's another deep one. I've said that's about there. You might be shouting at your computer screen saying you've got it in the wrong place. Mm, maybe. Mm, what's about there? So say I looked at those and reckoned, and I'm going to just move that, that all this top line are pretty much the same tone, even though one is purple, one is blue, one is sienna, one is ooh, dark greeny, grey, whatever. They are roughly the same tone. Then I've got the second layer here. Then these ones are roughly the same tone. These are roughly the same tone and these. So if I was painting, I could, and say I was painting just a pale shadow, I could substitute any of those colours and I could have a pale brown shadow, a pale blue one and it would read properly. Or if it was a deep dark shadow, I could have purple shadows, I could have brown shadows, I could have blue shadows and as long as I get the tone right they will read correctly. Ditto in the middle in those mid-tones then I can substitute any of those colours as long as I get those tones right and this is a really good way say of training your eye and to see whether I've actually got it right or not I can turn this black and white just take a quick photo on your on your phone or tablet turn it black and white and it'll show what you've got wrong now this isn't to say that you can substitute any colour for anything because say, oh, I don't know, you were working in red and green. Well, we know that red and green mixed together can make a really gungy um, brown, depending on you know which red and which green it is. So you still need to make sure that your colours are going to play nicely together on the paper. And when you see rainbow pictures of zebras or people, Father Christmas, actually often they do go in the rainbow um, order so that the red is next to the orange is next to the yellow so that they all play nicely. If I put purple next to yellow where they mix I'm going to get some pretty gungy colours. So though you can substitute any colours of the same tone you do need to make sure that they're going to play well on the paper and if they're not you need to keep them set. Let's just end by looking at colour value switching in action. And this is watercolour on canvas and I know this eagle does not have turquoise wing feathers. I know this eagle does not have a pink body but what I've done is kept that tonal map constant and I've switched the hues so I've done that tonal colour switching to keep the lights light and the darks dark but not necessarily a white head and a very dark browny black body. I've switched up those colours and now we've got beautiful hues of 
turquoise, blues, siennas, goodness knows what. And I think that brings an excitement and it's part of what the story that I'm trying to tell about how much I, I love this eagle.